Alpine, Illinois, in another anonymous hotel room. Same room, different location. Why is it that every American hotel furnishes its rooms with the identical warehouse track, huh? Harrisburg, PA, Dayton, Ohio, South Houston, uh, Lakeland, New York, Irvine, California, Aurora, Illinois, Tampa, Cleveland, Buffalo, Lansing, Miami. Each and every one of these dreary places are one and the same. Kids, I'm gonna show them so much porn, they just throw up. I'm like, so horny today. For some reason, I'm super horny on a wet. What's up? Я мог бы уже вырасти свою курицу за это время.
Sharon, honey, what's up? Uh-huh. Did the Badgers win? <laughs> Did you go to the game? <laughs> great, that's great. Busy. I'm painting my kitchen. <laughs> you should see me, Sharon. I've got, like, paint on my hair, my face, all over. So I'm totally need to be out of this kitchen like yesterday. <laughs> what? How so? Uh-huh, but... But Sharon, honey, why would Roger call me? Well, yeah, once in a while, but... It's not like we call each other. Roger's... Who? Light bulb. What? There's no Mr. Paulson here. This place is room 508. Uh, Mr. Paulson called maintenance. Please find mistake in my lamp and change it. Uh, seriously, there, there's nobody called Paulson here. This is wrong information. Have the mercy to me. It doesn't matter. Just come in. We had a misunderstanding on this key point. Forget about it. Just, just come in and change the bulb. Yes, please. Uh, this is a little difficult for me. Forgive my invasions. This is a reputed hotel. It's really gorgeous. Roger? Yeah, how about if we just like totally forget supper? And just come back to the hotel. We can eat each other. We can go out tonight. I've just been like sitting around filing the nails, getting real horny for you. Are you horny for me?
got my cell phone. Oh, yeah. Hawaii. I didn't sign up on that. Oh. Oh. No. How the hell can you afford Hawaii? Here is your key, sir. From 508. Have a very pleasant night time, sir. Guess who I just ran into? Who? Bruce. Fucking Bruce. Bruce? Brenda, if that lard ass. Is Bruce like staying in this hotel? I thought he had like a condo in Rigneville. Yeah, he was meeting Steve. He claimed some fear meeting or whatever. The thing is, I thought Steve was on some vacate in Hawaii. Otherwise, I never would have arranged. Roger. You don't remember Steve? No. From the Madison branch? Steve Paulson. God. Oh, God, this is fucked up. Bruce! It's like every single client interaction is being recorded and judged. Fifteen miles away. Paulson? Twenty. What? You said his name is Paulson. Yeah, Steve Paulson. Oh. <laughs> oh, that, that totally screams. This was his room. What? How do you know this? Oh, well, this, like, this maintenance guy came in to fix the light in the bathroom, and uh -huh. he thought he was still here. Jeez, I hope they changed the sheets. Sweetheart. You haven't left this room, have you, for any reason? No. I just took a shower and stuff. Good. Okay, good. Good! We should be good. Look! Scared the shit out of me. Bruce, if he'd seen you, if we'd arranged to meet in the lobby and he'd seen you here looking like that... Jesus. Everybody, I mean everybody at the bank would be flapping their gums. Sharon, she'd probably find out by Monday.
Vino vetre, gusto di tre. Roger. What's over here, Brenda? What's going on? No, nothing, nothing. Go back to sleep. I heard a noise. Yeah, uh, I can't sleep. I was, I was reading. Uh, Shelly and any guy. Go back to sleep. You sent this. Oh, Jesus. You meant to send this to Sharon. <laughs> Seriously? Sweetie, still awake, tossing and turning, thinking about you, our situation, having to sleep alone in this lumpy hotel bed. If we can't sell the house soon, fuck it, I'm gonna quit and move back to Madison. Bruce really getting on my case lately. Hate that backstabber. Oh, don't forget to give Buddy Boo his thyroid medicine. Love you, baby, X. P.S. Go Badgers. Have we you? X? You don't care I about do, me. Baby, but no. Fuck. You don't love me. But I'm just an ego boost with great tits and a nice ass. It's a text message. I don't see what the big deal is. Gee, I must be living on Mars. I have to make it sound real. I, I'm sorry to be so well, business minded about it, but if it doesn't ring true, then Sharon's gonna, uh, Sharon is not gonna believe it. I know you just like totally had to remind Sharon to give Buddy Boo his medicine. It's all about the cat, right? <laughs> Fucking God! Calm down, it's not like a panic attack here. You're her best friend, you, you know what she's like. Look, I just, I can't give her any reason, any reason at all to be suspicious. We're already on tender hooks, you know? Wandering around the house, touching each other with 10 foot poles, Sharon and me. Oh yeah, and so like that's why you're planning to quit the bank and move back to Madison, huh? Okay, I'm not moving back to Madison. I just, I wrote that. I just, I said it. Look, I'm sorry, Brenda, but we have a lot of exposed parts no, it's here. It's always like Sharon 101, issues of the day pertaining to Sharon. How do you give Sharon every little thing she needs? Baby, listen, listen to me, listen to me, please. <laughs> Roger, <laughs> Roger, this just, this just, this just blows fucking everything out of the water. Just gone, fucking gone. Please don't cry, baby, please. I mean, fuck. Please don't cry, please don't cry, baby, please. Just, just think about the context. It's this thing with Bruce. The fuck does Bruce have to do with it? Bruce is a very untrustworthy individual. So then, like, why didn't you text Bruce? Uh, okay, forget about Bruce. Take Bruce out of the equation. So all you guys drink from the same toilet. Just take a deep breath, will you, please? <laughs> all I wanted to do was give her a snapshot of me in some chilly hotel room somewhere, not in bed with another woman. Especially not you. God forbid she's already jealous, you know? She is. What? Oh, come on. What do you think? What is so funny? You're not like some sister I occasionally make out with. Huh? What? What? Seriously? What? I am just really, really sick of this situation. I mean, no. Imagine how it feels when I'm always having to be like, Totally friendly to her and like totally grinning in her face. I know, Brenda. Look, I know, I know that. But we have to stay vigilant. Because if Sharon divorces me, I will have nothing. No possessions. Would you want to sleep with me then? On the floor with no possessions.
Roger? Are you all right? Roger, are you all right in there?
Yes? Uh, <clears throat> I have a reservation. But... Name, please. Sorry, Mr. Blumenthal, but uh, your room is no longer anymore available. Huh? What do you mean? Well, we ran your credit card this morning and it bounced. <laughs> bounced? I said that's a company card. Yeah, well, the bank would not accept the charge, so we had to release your reservation and give away your room. Wait a minute. To another guest. Wait just one minute. Why'd you even run my card, huh? I never paid in advance at any hotel. Yes, but we need a definite sure that she's valid, your card. What do you think I am, huh? Hmm? A shyster? Huh? A dirty shyster? Well, I have a wallet full of valid credit cards, and my credit score, for your information, is a perfect 850. Uh, uh, Visa, American Express, MasterCard, Capital One. I pay with a different card. Yeah, we did try to call you. We left many voice messages. Oi, Faye. I was up in the sky. How am I supposed to get your message? Well, I'm very sorry, sir, but it is strict, our policy. Okay, well, just give me another room. I'm sure you have other rooms available. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I don't expect this place is fully booked. In fact, I imagine you have multiple rooms available. I mean, uh, I'll accept an upgrade. A suite will be adequate. All right, uh, all right. Let me see if I can do. No, you see, the hotel really is completely all booked. There is a very heavy fashion show in town this week. A fashion show? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something, lady. I have journeyed over a thousand miles. I am a professional, not some putz, huh? Wrong. That's right, <clears throat> The uh, news is good. Hmm. Yes, I believe that room uh, 508 is available. Good. the Harash, the Harash. <laughs> Mr. Salper says that uh, he wishes that your stay here with us will be a very kindly one. Ah, thanks. Heads off to you, mister.
Room 508, Hotel Beep, Palatine, Illinois. In another anonymous hotel room. Same room, different location. Why is it that every American hotel furnishes their room with the identical warehouse dreck, huh? Harrisburg, PA, Dayton, Ohio, South Houston, uh, Latham, New York, Irvine, California, Aurora, Illinois, Tampa, Cleveland, Buffalo, Lansing, Miami. Each and every one of these dreary places are one and the same. Interchangeable. Of course, uh, I'd much rather be at home uh, on the couch, nestling with my lovely bride. <laughs> but I simply do not have the choice. Uh, my job entails a lot of travel, and I mean a lot. Yeah. Anyone who's been following this will know what it's like when you spend most of your time schlepping about. You really don't have an actual home. You know, you don't live in Brooklyn or Los Angeles or any of the cities in between. You live in a country of hotels. Maybe, maybe I wouldn't feel so uh, dislocated uh, if my wife would travel with me every once in a while, but that uh, just isn't practical. No. no. I mean, anyway, what would she do with herself? There's nothing going on here in Palatine. Trust me, this place is a wasteland. I mean, this fur-cocked hotel, which shall remain nameless, doesn't even have an indoor pool. top computer system support specialist, I'd have a sinecure in the home office by now, no question. Absolutely no question.
Coffee. Ich war Arsch. Hm? Arsch, Arsch. Ich oh, war. Chef Urka. Ich schon sie. Wrecked. And the Pauli night, uh, couldn't sleep. Ideas were coming yeah. out of the woodwork. Ah. So wired, you know, I, I couldn't compute them, but they just kept on coming. I should have taken a better drill. Don't you just hate when you get all itchy in the middle of the night, you know, and you can't sleep? Problem is, I've got an uh, emergency at 10 o'clock meeting with uh, Beat to somehow get to. This fakakt client, who shall remain nameless, has got a network scenario where a router keeps failing intermittently. So I'm back again, redeployed. 90% of the time, these local pishes point the finger at everybody else but themselves, only calling in a CSS person to troubleshoot and reconfigure after things have reached a crisis point. They wait until things have got so dire, and then they tell me to be at the airport in two hours. It's a total pain in my tuchus. Let's face reality, guys. Huh? Let's, let's invite reality into the room. You are software engineers, computer scientists, not a bunch of code monkeys. You know, I give you the dots. You ought to be able to connect them. A little while ago, I phoned my wife. It was early, but not that early. Couldn't have said more than four or five sentences before she started raging at me in hatred. Sometimes, when I call her, it's the most uh, empathetic and compassionate voice you have ever heard. Other time, she just roars out in hatred. You know, real psychotic stuff. You know, I can handle the temporal workload of seven men. I have been using this skill to confound my superiors for years. I am such a maven that IT managers from all over the country want a piece of me. It's just the pressure is... I can't slow down my metabolism. It just keeps going and going, and there is only so far you can drive on a spare tire before you... Hey! Hey! Oh, sorry. What are you doing? What are you doing in here? Sorry, I... What are you doing in my room? If I make a mistake, sir, excuse me. I think your room is available. Your linens and towels are peeling up outside your door. I think you went outside for the day. Oh, I get bold. Are you literate? Oh, yes? Ah, you speak English, huh? Please, sir. I'm not very good with spelling or expression. My English is not so sophisticated. Oh, you know what that means? Huh? Huh? What does it say? Huh? Tell me, read it. Sorry. I'm not good enough for your sophisticated English. Sometimes words run away from my head. It reads, do not disturb. I mean, th th there's a picture. There's even a picture, a, a pictograph. Uh, where are you from, huh? what country? Because in this country, when a sign reads, do not disturb, do not disturb means, do not disturb. Mr. Sober, All right, okay, let me make one thing clear. I have no intention in getting that maid fired. Regardless of how it sounded, I have no desire to see her sent back to Poland or Russia or whatever country. You know what I'll do? I'll leave her a tip. A really generous tip, you know, some guilt. Huh? And these verbal altercations, you know, these, uh, battles. Why am I 
really up in the grabs. You wait, this job's gonna give me a small cancer. So, first, you get on the campus, printing all the first two years. It's not bring cancer to even. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. And the Batosh, the Greeks. Rangent and Bandit Blue. Oh, my God. Oh, that's so good. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. So, uh, may I help you? Yes, you may. Uh, I'm in room 508. You did specify that room was a non-smoking room, did you not? All of floor number five entire is no smoking permit, yes. Well, obviously that policy is not being uh, correctly implemented because the room still smells of stale smoke. I mean, there was a strong smoke smell when I first walked in. Obviously that room is not being correctly deodorized. I, I am too sorry, sir. Some guest must have violated the law. Also, you should know that someone has spilled popcorn in the hall on the fifth floor. I mean, there's popcorn kernels all on the carpet all outside my room. I would recommend you send someone from housekeeping to vacuum it up ASAP. Anything other? Well, ma'am, as a matter of fact, yes. I don't know where you people are from, but in this country, we use a 12-hour clock. Yeah, and you don't have to look at me like I'm something you just found stuck to the bottom of your shoe. Really rough day. And, uh, tough meeting. Don't you just hate it when you feel gilly over some putts who can't follow English? It turns out, a simple patch I sent over last month had been improperly installed. And now a worm has infected three servers. Now the whole system has to be rejiggered. It's a total collapse of common sense. You'll love this. After the meeting, I then... Listen to that. Huh? Can you hear that? I'll be right back. It's taken them 11 hours, over 11 hours, to send someone from housekeeping to come and clean up the popcorn that some putz guest has dropped in the hallway. Ah! Yeah. Where was I? So, uh, after the meeting, I googled, uh, hospital pedipine and found a clinic where I thought, thought, I could find myself some sleeping medication. Bad thought to have. I'm w waiting for my pills to come out and I expect them to come out like a pizza in like 10 minutes but they keep me waiting in the waiting room for another hour, only to come out and then tell me I had to come back in two days. Are you kidding? I need something to put me down tonight. I'm just asking you to give me something to shut this monster off for stay. Anyway, maybe 
can be the squishy land where some crabby nurse comes out and she mumbles a couple of sentences and presents me with two pills. Two 15 milligram temazepam. I mean, what do you think I'm gonna do, huh, Robert Bank? Another thing to mention, uh, they examined me at the clinic and my temperature was 99.8. Unnaturally elevated, unlike anything I've ever experienced. It's really high, you know, dangerously high. I'm, I'm burning up. I'm having to consume massive quantities of food just to maintain the basic level of energy to get me through the day. Over the past few weeks, my vitality has been seeking out, especially at night. Dips too low, I might not get up and No question. I burn calories with my mind. Even when I read, you know, I pick up all kinds of interconnecting ideas. And after a few moments, I feel like I'm just gonna pass out. Thought flow. Slow it down. I've been trying to throw some meat, meatball sandwiches and, and other hats or I into myself, but after a couple of hours, it just goes right back on. Flying away. Shape on the right is I'm gonna stop that. I'm gonna schedule in a couple of heavy duty eating workouts. One a day at least. Uh, at least. I do not wanna end up in a, in a rest home with chronic fatigue syndrome, looking out of the window at some you know, sheep farm grazing sheep. I just want to maintain a body that does not burn up in a, in a fever of fiery metabolism. I'm here for you. Why are you itching? It's because a parasite, and not a small one, is inside of you, Polly. Moving inside you, just below the skin. A foreign entity, making up most of what seems to be living. If you, you know what it wants to see and hear. So you better be careful when you show it through your eyes. Otherwise, it will become upset. Twitch away. Crawl up and down inside your skin. Cause you to lose weight until there is nothing left. <laughs> you will be just another figment in the eye of the fish.
just had an altercation with a cop. A female undercover cop, if you will. Uh, this person was uh, going through the trunk of her car in the dark with a heavy-duty flashlight. Well, something about the situation just didn't seem right, you know, just didn't uh, seem kosher. And then I noticed something dangling shiny from her belt. Handcuffs. Well, I get, you know, what do you do? Huh? What do you do? I wasn't that, that prepared for another showdown, but I had to let her know that I knew what all this was about. I lingered in the parking lot till she sensed my presence. All she did was get back into her unmarked car, lock the door, and wait. Someone at the clinic must have called the police. You know, because I said, see you at the mall, you know, when they refused to give me my pills. People used to die with a bang. Huh? Now they just die with a click for stay. Excuse me, sir. Do you have a problem? Do you have a reason for uh, wandering around the parking lot? You have a gun. Are you prepared to use it? Because I am practicing by location. I am both here and on the moon, and you are just here. So you are outnumbered. <laughs>
with me. Good afternoon. Would you like to check in? Can we see a room? We would like to see a room. All right. No problem. A little carefulness never harms. I believe room 508 is unoccupied. You stay here with the baggage. Yeah, all right. Well, there's no point in us lugging it up there if we're not sure we're staying. You think we were gypsies? Band of gypsies, all the rubbish we carry about. You know, our rooms right. actually are quite nice. Very spacious, really appointed. I'm sure your rooms are more than adequate. I'm sorry, I know it's an unusual request, but when we're in America, my husband always needs to check the water level in the toilet. Um, if it's too high, he sometimes, you know, dips in. so quiet. I'm not a huge fan of silence.
Didn't she come back? <laughs> she didn't come back. Who? <clears throat> I, I don't know. I, 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 you mean Beverly? Beverly. No. Jane Mansfield. Yes, I mean, Beverly. This is her hotel room, darling. Okay. Uh, and who are you? How long have you been waiting, Derek? Uh, am I supposed to know you? We were in Lucky's. Your band was playing. You had a show tonight, remember? Yeah. But I don't remember you, man. Sorry. Oh, dear. Hey, uh, this, this isn't your birthday or something, is it? I mean, this is just a gig in Palatine. This isn't Madison fucking Square. Although if I'd had 17 drinks and some babe bought me a shot, I'd probably do it too, just for the principle of it. I'm Vic. Vic. Vic Spencer. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, right. Uh, you belong here. Beverly gave you her room key. She told you to come up here and wait for her. Okay, what's the rub, Vic? For one thing, I'm her husband. Beverly is my wife. Let me tell you something else about Beverly. She's a slut. She was a slut when I married her. I didn't know what I did. She's loud. She's the reason I went to Vegas. Las Vegas is crazy. <laughs> you can do anything in Las Vegas. So a man marry a pig in Las Vegas. Doing it, Chief. I'm doing <clears throat> somewhere between the O and the K, huh? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, man. It feels like it's stuffed with saran wrap. You want a cup of Joe? Looks like you could use a jolt. Huh? Cigarettes and coffee. Does it for me every time. <sighs> Get downs. Uh, <laughs> I never heard of this band. Uh, um, then again, I'm not up on all the latest groups. <laughs> Why would you be? They don't play rock and roll anymore, the new ones. No more rock and roll? Really? Uh, these lame ass American bands, it's like they check their testicles at the door. Who ever heard of fucking Clark Kent playing bongo? Yeah. You know what I what I told you before? Uh, <laughs> listen, I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, <clears throat> that was a lie. I am not Beverly's husband. I never was. 
The truth is that I met her at Lucky's, the same as you. Can't get her out of my mind. I want to marry her, but she won't have me. It... Isn't that the business? <sighs> Did you believe what I just told you? It was another fib. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't love Beverly. Um, I don't want to be married. You know, I've already been in that movie. <laughs> Jesus fucking Jesus. <laughs> My only interest in Beverly is as a photographer. Photographer. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's something wrong with you, Vic. I think you should go. <laughs> I'm a fashion photographer. I work for 24 Carat. Beverly is going to be a high fashion model, a supermodel. The chick has not only got the looks, <sighs> she's got the moves. Most models, and I said most, are actually kind of hard on the eyes. Saving Grace being a combination of... Uh, Makeup artist and a photographer directing the model. Huh? <laughs> any photographer worth his salt should be able to make any girl look like her pics belong in the best mags. That is, if she doesn't go all Humpty Dumpty on you when she moves. I mean, she's got to be able to shake it. Many girls don't know how to do this. It's really easy, though. If you can dance, you can supposedly model. <laughs> I can teach a dog to model. Many models are dogs, so to speak. And I'm not being intentionally cruel to dogs. <laughs> All it takes are a good body. Big breasts. Tiny non-existent breasts. And the willingness to smile and dance around. That's the thing. Darling, do you have a cigarette? What? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Derek, I have asked you three times. Do I have to ask you in sign language? Do you smoke? No. <sighs> All right, you better have a pack of cigarettes around here somewhere. Uh, get a fucking chicken. Go to the toilet with our next pack of cigarettes. Hey, 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 stay out of her shit, man. What was that? I don't know who you are, who you really are. But she gave me the hotel key, not you. Darling, you better just chill out. You're gonna run up quite a tab on that mini bar. Tough titty. Anyway, what's it to you? Well, <laughs> I'm paying for the room, just so you know. That's right. Can you... All right, Vic. Where's Beverly? <sighs> oh, she's at my place. Your place? I... Shh, shh. No. You mean, but... There's been a change of plans. Beverly and Louisa. Louisa. Those girls have got to be bright-eyed and gorgeous by 7 a.m. We're putting on an event. Uh-huh. It's losing money. Uh, weather. Delays, et cetera, fucking et cetera. Uh, I had to tell the girls. There's a chance they might not get paid. Beverly, she takes it in stride. Louisa proceeds to freak the holy hell out, screaming, crying. I was promised thousand dollars a day for this. You know the last fucking thing that I need is a crier with an annoying personality. What kind of event is this? Some sort of, some sort of porn? What? What's that? 
adult entertainment. Sex stuff, is that your angle? Do you, where did you go to school? Is that what they taught you? Putting naked people out there for anyone and everyone to see, huh? <laughs> naked people, naked people all tangled up, huh? <laughs> Beverly is a wonderful woman. She is not a whore. Now, don't mind me. I'm gonna go stand under hot water. Hot shower. That's a fruit cup, a cup of soup, and a home run. That's living, baby. She loves me now. She loves me. She loves me now. I think it's the same. She loves me now. She loves me. She loves me now. She loves me. She loves me now. She loves me. She loves me now. Come and have a taste. 
blue, 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 blue. I taste like blueberries. I bet you have a nice cock. Okay, sweet pea. You gotta pitch into the show. I don't beg. What? Mm. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. Mm -hmm. We could have lots and lots of fun together. I'm an equal opportunity man. I have a weakness for all kinds of men. French man, Spanish mm. man, yes. you know? I find Neanderthals really hot too. Hang on, sexy man. Don't go anywhere. I gotta get something. I'm a cheeky girl. I love having fun. But don't diss the panda. Just to warn you. I know you guys want to jerk your cocks, but you're going to have to wait. It's just a body call. I just got to pee. I'll be back in a sec. You okay? Vic! Vic.
Then, baby boy, you are in the wrong. Pulse. So you are new to be at this hotel, huh? Uh, well, yes, if, if we... Some people, very nice, call me by my name, Sammy. I think it's easier to call my name Sammy. Nice to make your acquaintance, Sammy. I wonder what's taking my husband so long. I hope he's not up there watching the telly. Some guests don't call your name, and don't even ask your name. And they tell you what I must do, and they ask us do too much, and not even leave tip also. They treat us like pigs. Yeah, they just a horse left to us. We really wish to make friends with people that comes from this country. Health weather, and we live there very far from people that think that we are harmful. We live there since 3,000 years old, and never anybody hear about our harm. Our country is harmless, if that word is true. 